first of all, I'd like to thank you for coming. S secondly, uh, I want to thank Promethean for hosting this event. The question I want you to contemplate is early on, when you first were exposed to technology and you thought about the potential in education, what did you expect to happen? People to get excited as I was. I wanted everybody to... To be excited. Yeah. So there, it was, if I could put this in my words, it was kind of a, a moment where that was pregnant with possibilities. And if uh, you're like me, I held out, I, I have great hope that the impact, uh, that it will impact education of all children. Uh, so just, just out of curiosity, so we have a lot of experience in the room, how many of you believe that uh, what's happened in your career has exceeded your expectation. It, your expectation in terms of uh, improving education for all children. Okay? That's the issue and it gives me the cold sweats at 2 o'clock in the morning. And that's also the issue that we're grappling with at Dell because uh, we're good at selling, we're good at getting out and around, we're good at making the case, and many of you are excellent customers. Um, and at some point, we have to see, does it all add up? And so we've been giving a lot, a lot of thought to that. And graphically, I mean, Mike, this is uh, stuff we've talked about and pictures we've drawn on napkins over the years. Uh, what this is all about is how do we get from A to B? And if A's where we've been, and we had these moments where we were, uh, that were pregnant with possibility, and we have these expectations that are unrealized, can we describe that space, whatever it is, as B? Okay, kind of with me? <clears throat> so let's just play a little game here. If you walked into a classroom, how long would it take for you to recognize that B was occurring in that classroom? How many of you could recognize it in a month? Okay. How many of you could recognize it in a week? How many of you could recognize it in one day? How many of you could do it in an hour? How many of you could do it in five minutes? It's kind of like name that tune, right? Okay, so think about that just for a second. You just described B in your mind. You mapped it out. You know what, I mean, in your, there is something that you're saying, if I see it, I'll know what it is. Uh, you all very eloquently uh, and, and heartfelt described a and B. And having gone through this process, um, what I saw was this isn't, A and B wasn't precise enough. And that there are many steps along the way. And so there's a body of work that talks about border crossings. And so if you think about people being committed to A, and that some people say, you know, it's not working, and they cross the border. And over here, it engage, they become involved in idiosyncratic activity. And what this looks like is you see one classroom, somebody differentiating the instruction. You go to the classroom right next to it, and it's like Mike described. Now, the next step is can these folks align themselves in a way where there's consistency? Having been in these situations, and many of you know this, getting from here and getting anybody to cross this border is one tremendous accomplishment, okay? Getting a group of people who cross that border to come up here and stand united is a miracle. I mean, it is, it is off the chart goodness. 15 people in a row walk in to be interviewed and they all say 
here's how I differentiate instruction, here's how we engage parents, and, and everybody's bought into it. And then you see evidence of it uh, in their documents, evidence of it in their surveys, evidence of it in their practice, uh, you begin to think, hey, something special is going on here. Now, my sense is then that there's another border that has to be crossed. And that that border that has to be crossed involves a replication of those practices. And so it's one, this is a big step, this is a big step, this is an equally big step. And what I'm beginning to see as I talk with folks is, uh, you know, Mike and Mike, when we first used to draw these little pictures and stuff, we were hoping that someone would walk over here because we were hanging out over here. You know, we tend to be hanging out up here and we're l hoping more people will come join us so we can get over here. But this is a lot more populated than it used to be. Okay? Yeah. And this meeting is evidence of it. The excitement, the uh, demonstration of practice is a, uh, is a celebration of people who have crossed these borders. And my sense is you're all going to leave here redoubling your efforts. And that's the sort of thing that, that Dell, Promethean, and other companies that are here, we want to be a part of. We want to help you do that because these steps create the tipping point. And so the title of this session is, are you digging in or moving on? Digging in is staying here. And it's not unusual if someone is over here to get sucked back here. And one of the things for you to look at is the research on comprehensive school reform. 16 years, a little bit less than $10 billion, only to conclude that the, the whole school models didn't produce the results that they had hoped for. They didn't get up here, nor neither did they get over here. So what, we're, what we have to kind of figure out as uh, people who want to move on, who want to cross these borders, is how do we work together? How do we collaborate? How do we support it? How do we think? How do we document it? And so this is kind of a framework um, that reflects uh, a lot of conversations with several of you in this room over the years, and uh, um, I'm very grateful for you uh, contributing to that and want to push this a little bit further. So we're interested in continuing that discussion, and here's some final thoughts. <clears throat> and this is going to echo a lot of the, the things that have been said today and will be said tomorrow. First off, uh, it <laughs> seems like we all could benefit from having a deeper way of interpreting education change particularly education change that involves technology. The second thing is uh, this contextual approach, you know, where you're um, uh, observing and reviewing and so on, but then providing some ratings and, and having that evidence uh, seems to be a good way to document and map change. So if you're having a hard time making the a causality relationship between an investment here and an investment here. The behaviors you want to change aren't did the computers get deployed on time, it's is instruction being differentiated, are parents being engaged, because the evidence indicates that when those kinds of engagements are present, achievement goes like this, discipline goes like this, engagement goes like this, all the wonderful things that we know and love. And then the, the third point and this is kind of our phrase, or my phrase, or, uh, but I've heard other, a lot of people say this today, is, is the technology in service of practice, or is the practice in service of technology? And so pretty much what I'm showing is a, a model, a method, where we can look at how technology is in service, in service of practice. And this allows you to walk down the hall, and those of you in the technology space, and have a conversation about pedagogy. Uh, and uh, position yourself in a way where uh, you're part of the solution, you're part of the help. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.